praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachaakurash. And double honors, as always, goes to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone, who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect, the remnant, all right, who in these latter days will prophesy to come back to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose Hebrew name is Yahweh, okay, through his only begotten son, all right, who sacrificed himself, all right, and his blood covered the elect. And through him, in these latter days, we have received the Holy Spirit, Rechakodash, all right, so that we can stand on our feet, all right, uh, calling on the names of the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, okay, repenting, uh, and ultimately turning away from idols, receiving the salvation that is foretold, all right. Now, today, as you all know, we are in the holy day, which is known as Hanukkah, right? In the Hebrew, it's Chanach, all right? Which means dedication, all right? So we're going to go into that history. But uh, I plan on doing a series for those of you who may not have the understanding on what this holy day represents and what it means for us as Israelites. We're going to go into it, ultimately starting at 1 Maccabees, the first chapter, and hopefully in the coming days, I can get through the second chapter the third chapter and the fourth chapter, all right? The Spirit uh, has jumped on me to go through it. And we're going to start here in 1 Maccabees, the first chapter, all right? And now when you uh, understand the Maccabees comes out of the Apocrypha. Now the Apocrypha was in the original 1611 King James Bible, and it is, all right, canon. It is, all right, of the Holy Scriptures, okay? Now when you go into the Scriptures, in Daniel, the seventh chapter, it gives you the outline of the different captivities the Israelites would undergo, okay, after, uh, you know, the kingdom was rent after King Solomon's sin, okay, the kingdom was rent, you had the northern kingdom, who would eventually go into the Assyrian captivity, and then you would have the southern kingdom who went into the Babylonian captivity. Now, when you read Daniel, the seventh chapter, it gives you an outline of the different captivities, all right? And it goes as follows. You have the Assyrian-Babylonian captivity, okay? The Assyrian-Babylonian captivity. After them, you would have the, the uh, Persians and the Medes, all right? And then you would have the Greeks, and then you would have the Roman Empire, which is the fourth beast. Now, if you take the Apocrypha out, okay, where would you find the history of the Israelites and what happened with them in the Greek Empire, as that was a very, very important captivity to understand and know about going into the New Testament to understand why particular things were worded the way that they were worded when you see the term Greek or Grecian and things like that. It's very important to understand the history of the Israelites as they were in the Greek Empire. Now, if you're a Christian, Okay, or are you just a naysayer? You don't think that that's important. But for us, who are the true biblical Israelites, it is important. All right, so without the Apocrypha, you don't have the understanding of the Israelites as they went into the Greek captivity, being Hellenized, okay, and ultimately becoming heathen. Okay? Okay, falling to the idols of the Greeks. Okay, and then when you go into the New Testament, you see that it jumps directly to the uh, Roman Empire, all right, right after the book of, I believe, uh, Malachi, okay, it just jumps, all right, to the New Testament where you have the coming of Yahawashai, and that's the Roman captivity. Well, what was after the Persian Empire, the Medes and the Persians? The Greeks, okay, so that's the history we're going to go into, all right, and also dealing with the uh, Hanukkah, all right, it's very important to know this as well, when you go into John, the 10th chapter, that Yahawashai celebrated this holy day, this is John 10 and 22, it says, and it was at Jerusalem, the feast of dedication, and it was winter, all right, and right now we're in winter, right, all right, pretty much going into winter, and we're having the feast of dedication, all right, and we're going to go into the history 
but we're going to go all right point by point book by book because when you read first maccabees all right uh one chapters one through four that's pretty much the story of hanukkah all right but the spirit is just on me to go through each chapter and we're going to start here in chapter one but we're going to look up that word feast of dedication john 10 and 22 because yahweh shine <laughs> all right you think now the scriptures say that yahweh shine was without sin all right, if he celebrated a false holy day, that would make him off, right? Now, Hanukkah, all right, is not of the holy days that are written in the book of Leviticus, I believe the 23rd chapter, but as we went through history as Israelites, there's particular days that have been hallowed, all right, for their importance in our history, okay? And this is one of them, all right? So this is dedication, okay? I'll just go to the point. It says, in particular, the annual feast celebrated eight days beginning in the 25th, all right, of Chislev, middle of our December. It says, instituted by Judas Maccabees, all right, in 164 BC, in memory of the cleansing of the temple from the pollution of Antiochus Epiphanes, who was an Edomite, okay? So here it is, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, knew about this holy day, and he was there to celebrate it. Okay, now the Christians will say, well, uh, that, that doesn't justify the apocrypha. Yes, it does, man, amongst many things. This, that's just one point that we can bring out to prove to you that the apocrypha is valid. Okay, so the, the high holy day of Hanukkah, Hanukkah was celebrated by our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, point blank, period. Okay, he was there, okay? So, this isn't something we're making up, all right? And pretty much, when you go into it, it's, uh, you know, seven days of, of, of joy, okay? Uh, gift giving, all right? And praising of Yahweh Bashmi al Shai, all right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to start here in 1 Maccabees, which we always go into this book, but we're going to start, start here so that we can get the background of Hanukkah, all right, or Hanak, dedication, all right, so this is 1st Maccabees, the first chapter and the first verse, it says, and it happened that Alexander, son of Philip the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Shittim, had smitten Darius, the king of the Persians and Medes, that reigned in it, uh, uh, that he reigned in his stead first over Greece. Now, <clears throat> when you go into the history Alexander didn't actually put the sword to Darius, but it was his force, all right? And the uh, the Persians and the Medes, they were like, look, this dude is conquering, this, this, their, their armies are too swift, okay? And they were, they were ultimately, and Darius had pride. He was ultimately saying, no, I'm, I'm not bowing to this dude, okay? So it was one of Darius's close, all right, uh, henchmen, hitmen that actually said, finally, we, you know, this dude is going to get us killed. We need to submit to Alexander. And he put Darius to death. Okay? And you can go into the history and look that up. It says, in May, many wars, all right, why? Because Esau was blessed with the sword and slew the kings of the earth and went through the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations, all right, of the known world of that time, Alexander conquered, all right? And he did it in, 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 in swift fashion, okay? That's why the Greeks are likened unto a leopard. And he's known to walk around with a leopard head. When you go to Daniel, the seventh chapter, the Greek empire is known as the leopard, okay? So it says, and he took spoils of many nations, okay? Because remember, Isaac blessed Esau with the sword, okay? And the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. All right, the pride of thy heart. <laughs> All right, now the thing about Alexander um, is that when he conquered, all right, he allowed the Jews to pretty much practice their customs. All right, he wasn't a nuisance unto them. All right, he actually, uh, when you go into the history, Josephus says that he came and bowed to uh, the high priest. All right, but as we keep reading, that's where the hell comes for the Israelites. All right, 
So it says, and he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. He ultimately was taken down the nations round about and they bowed to him. They became tributaries, meaning they made their kingdom a part of his kingdom and they were vassals and ultimately paid taxes and tribute unto him. Okay, it was, it was the Edomite time to rule. Now, this is the beginning of the beast system. When you get Revelation, the 13th chapter, it says that the beginning of this beast, as a matter of fact, when you get Revelation, the 13th chapter, okay, Revelation, the 13th chapter, in the first verse, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And, and, his, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. Okay? Of course, the seven heads, or the, it starts with the Greeks, the Romans, uh, Germania Major, Germania Minor, right, the French, the Spanish, um, and the British. That's the seven heads. And then the ten horns are the vassal states, the Lombards, the Visigoths, the Vandals, the Suebes. Uh, I think I have it here. Uh, the Burgundies, the Franks. The Alemanni, the Ostrogoths, the Anglo Saxons, the Ureli, the, the Lombards, and so forth. These are ultimately subordinate to Rome, all right, but they had their power. Just like today, you have the EU, okay, those are likened unto the, 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 ten, the, uh, the uh, ten horns, but you have the major empire which they're subordinate to, which is America, okay? So, this beast speaks of the Edomite power structure, okay? And the beast, which is started with the Greeks, okay? And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were like unto a bear, all right? And that's, the bear is Russia. But it says, the, the, the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. And when we go here to Daniel, the seventh chapter, okay? Daniel, the seventh chapter, going to the uh, Greek Empire, Daniel 7 and 6, and, and after this I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had on the back of it four wings, which are the four generals, which we'll get into, okay? Back of it, four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given unto it. So the, the Greek Empire, okay, is synonymous with the leopard, okay? Now, give me one second here. This lighting is right. All right. It says, um, let me go back to verse 4, 1 Maccabees 1 and 4. And he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. And after these things, he fell sick. All right. He had a particular disease because he was a freak. All of you Edomites are freaks. Okay? But anyway, it says, um, And perceived that he should die. Wherefore he called his servants, such as were honorable, and had been brought up with him from his youth, and he parted his kingdom amongst them while he was yet alive. And that's the four wings we read about here in Daniel, the seventh chapter. Okay? Lysimaeus, Cassander, Ptolemy, Lysimaeus, Cassandra, Ptolemy, and Seleucid, okay? It says, so Alexander reigned 12 years and he died, and his servants bear rule every one in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. And this is why Esau, okay, when you go into it, you know, there's a, a a series I loaded up that the elder apostle Ramlov did is why was the apocrypha removed from the Bible? Okay, and he goes into it. And if you uh, need that, just hit me up on the comment board. And it's on my page. You just look for it. Okay, you can just go to the search and just type in apocrypha removed or just ask and I'll give you that link. But ultimately, the Bible Destruction Group, all right, knew that they had to get this out. Okay, and the, the word. Uh, apocrypha means uh, hidden away, okay? They knew, all right, that it identified them as the wicked. It's one of the reasons they removed it, all right? It says, and they all put crowns on themselves, 
and evils were multiplied throughout the earth. Not good things, not peace, evils. The same thing you see happening today in this world, evil. All right, when you get Revelation, the sixth chapter, let's get that real quick. And then we'll try to read all the way through. But Revelation, the sixth chapter, okay, in the fourth verse, it says, And there went out another horse that was red, right, because Esau, Edom is red, and power was given to him that set thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. So wherever Esau goes, wickedness follows, man. All right? Because that's just his M.O., okay? And look at the world now under his vibration. Everyone's after each other's throat, war everywhere, pestilence, okay? Everybody's talking about getting the gat and, you know, rolling on the, the enemies and all of that. That's the vibration Esau leaves behind. He's the border of wickedness, okay? And as is the ruler, so are the people who follow him, okay? So getting back into the story, okay, First Maccabees, the first chapter, in the eighth verse, it says... And his servants bear a rule, everyone in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. <laughs> demons. Just a bunch of demons, man. They were even at war with each other. It says, and there came out of them a wicked root. Okay, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king. Okay. And it was a few, and it was more than one Antiochus, okay? But they came out of the Seleucid Empire, okay? It says, who had been hostage at Rome, and he reigned in 130 and seven, he reigned in the 130 and seven year of the kingdom of the Greeks. And in those days, okay, because this is where the hell for the Israelites starts, okay? In the Greek Empire, remember before that we were able to keep our customs. We were able to, you know, play the Israelite games we played. We had particular games we played, and all of that. But when Antiochus came onto the scene, was where things started to change for us. And ultimately, you couldn't profess yourself to be a Jew anymore. Okay, so this is where you have to understand the importance of understanding this story and, and understanding the history behind why. We became heathen and Gentiles, okay? And why there was such a disdain between the circumcision, the Israelites born in the customs who had fought for the temple and those who had ultimately bowed to the Greek idols and the Roman idols. Very important to understand, okay? It says, In those days went there out of Israel wicked men, Sellouts who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Okay, so these sellouts ultimately were like, Look, we need to submit. Okay, if we can't beat them, join them. Okay, let's forsake the ways of our fathers so that we can ultimately be in good graces with the king. Antiochus and his uh, cohorts, it says, so this device pleased them well. And they said, since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow because they were putting hell on Jacob. Okay? So this device pleased them well. Then certain of the people were so forward therein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathen. Okay? Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen. Okay? According to the customs of the heathen, they built a place of exercise. And we, we always go into how that goes into the gymnasium. Showing you that there's remnants of Greco-Greek uh, influence here as well. It's not only the ancient Roman Empire that was rebirthed. Also, remnants of the Greek Empire was here. It was the Greco-Roman Empire. Now, Rome was the dominant of course, okay, but there's remnants of Greek culture here as well. What do you have? The gym, okay, but back then, ultimately, the word gymnos, look it up, okay, it means naked, okay, gymnos means naked. Gym, look up the word gymnos, all right, well, just type in gym definition, type in gymnos definition, all right, and 
the word the word gymnasium comes from the Greek root gymnos meaning nude all right <laughs> the the ancient and the ancient Olympic games will participate in the nude okay now today they have the top you know and the bottom but they're damn near naked but in ancient times they was running those races okay the titties flapping all right ball sack flapping everywhere okay and they were in the gym working out naked okay and that same vibration is here today you go to the gym okay you go to the locker room or maybe the steam because the gym i used to go to i gotta start going back <laughs> all right um you know i work out in the garage too but the gym I go to, you know, the steam room is in, you got to go through the locker room and you'll walk in there and old Edomites, old Jakes just walking around naked. And you, you know, that same vibe is back today, man. But anyway, so this device pleased them well. Then certain people, Jake, were so forward therein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathen. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant. Okay? They made themselves uncircumcised. All right? Now, yeah, it's talking about the physical circumcision of the penis because ultimately Antiochus put a decree out that they couldn't circumcise themselves. But this ultimately means what? That they stopped keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. A real quick precept, okay, is uh, Romans uh, 2. Okay, so this is why you see a big influence on the uncircumcised and the circumcised in the New Testament, all right, as Yahawashai, and then eventually Paul and the disciples, you know, went, you know, to preach to the to Gentiles, man. Paul and Barnabas, ultimately were uh, apostles unto the uncircumcision. These were the Israelites who were descendants of these very people we're reading about, but we'll get into that in just a minute. This is Romans 2 and 25. Okay. It says, uh, For circumcision verily profiteth if thou keepeth the law, but if thou break, if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. You see that? Thy circumcision is made uncircumcision if you be a breaker of the law. So this is what happened to the Israelites at this time. Okay, they 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 became forward in a, in in abominable acts. Okay, and made themselves uncircumcised. I don't mean that you know they they uh, had the foreskin cut off their penis and they wouldn't put it back on. No. Okay, there's another precept as well. I believe First Corinthians seven, but let's just keep reading. Okay, it says, um, and made themselves un uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. And eventually they started to be called heathen and looked down upon, and rightfully so. But the thing is, you know, just like us, because we were practicing a lot of Greco-Roman customs and doing all type of wickedness, but what happened? You know, the, the, the word of the Lord, the spirit, Okay, opened up to where we heard the word and we turned from those idols. That's the Gentiles in a nutshell. Okay, I know the wording throws you off. Okay, because there are natural Gentiles, but then Israelites became uncircumcised Gentiles as well. But anyway, we'll get into that more in part two when we go into how Judas <laughs> and his brethren were put into death. It was a disdain for Jake who sold out. So anyway... It says, now when the kingdom was established before Antiochus, okay, he thought to reign over Egypt that he might have dominion over two realms. Now who of the four generals reigned over Egypt was Ptolemy. So here it is, he wants to rule where his, you know, so-called brother, all right, fellow Greek, because remember it was four generals, Lysimaeus, Cassander, Ptolemy, and Seleucid. Ptolemy ruled over Egypt, so Antiochus had in his mind that I want to rule over Egypt, okay? So they started war, okay? Wherefore, he entered in Egypt with a great multitude, with chariots and elephants and horsemen and a great navy, 
and he made war with against Ptolemy, the king of Egypt. But Ptolemy was afraid of him and fled, and many were wounded to death. So he made war with his own people. The same thing happened in the day. Okay, Esau wars with his own damn people. Okay. Kingdom divided. Okay, the, the revolutionary wars is a war between Edomites, right? They've always warred. A war over slaves. Just just war, right? They're just unsatiable, man. Insatiable it says Thus they got the strong cities in the land of Egypt, and he took the spoils thereof. And after that Antiochus had smitten Egypt, he returned again in the hundred and forty and third year and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with great multitude, with a great multitude, and entered proudly into the sanctuary and took away the golden altar and the candlestick of the light and all the vessels thereof. Now what's the sanctuary? That's the temple. This is the temple that was built by King Solomon. Okay? King David gave him the blueprint and King Solomon built the temple because remember David had his mind to build a temple and what does the temple represent the dwelling place of the most high okay and what was there the altar okay inside you had the ark of the covenant the holy of holies and this was our how we had a relationship with the most high on earth through this physical temple okay which finally was sacked in 70 AD by the Romans who were Edomites okay so he walked into the temple, okay, and, and he just started snatching shit up, being a demon, okay, like Esau would do. So you imagine Jake was like, oh, my, my goodness, you know, like, whoa. <laughs> so it says he entered proudly into the sanctuary and took away the golden altar and the candlestick of lights and all the vessels thereof. And they still have this stuff, okay? Hidden away, it says, in the table of the shoe bread, in the pouring vessels, in the bowels, and the senses of gold, and the veil, and the crowns, and the golden ornaments that were uh, before the temple, all which he pulled off. He just came snatching stuff, rearranging stuff. To, you know, this mines. I'm taking this, you know. He took also the silver and the gold and the precious vessels, and he took the hidden treasures which he found. And when he had taken all away, he went into his own land, having made a great massacre and spoken very proudly. This is what Antiochus, all right, he, he, this is what he did, okay? Therefore, there was a great mourning in Israel in every place where they were, so that the princes and the elders mourned, the virgins and the young men were made feeble, and the beauty of the women was changed, okay? They were crying. You know, you know, you know how Jake make them <laughs> ugly faces when they cry, but, you know, we were mourning, okay? It says, and every bridegroom took up lamentations, and she that sat in the marriage chamber was in heaviness. Now, what is the marriage chamber? That's how you consummate the marriage, Okay? For you guys saying sex ain't marriage. Sex has a big part to do with marriage. Now, of course, there were customs and things, but the night, okay, after the feast, ultimately, they would go into the chamber, okay? The woman would, you know, the bridegroom, and the, I mean, uh, the, the woman would go into the chamber, and the man would lay with her, okay? She was a virgin, and ultimately... You know, after they laid together, that consummated the marriage, and you would have the token of virginity, you know, as in a, a record of the covenant that was made. Okay? But you got a lot of Israelites that are ashamed of that, and they're pushing marriage certificates as a means of, of, of uh, how marriage was done in ancient Israel. Now, things were recorded in particular instances, but that was between the two families. And Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh had nothing to do with the heathen states. All right? But anyway, the land also was moved for the inhabitants thereof, and all the house of Jacob was covered with confusion. Now, I'm just showing you, see, the Bible is a history book of the Israelites. 
okay? Before we were the Israelites, we were the sons of God going back to Adam, okay, through Seth, okay, uh, Enoch, Noah, Shem, Faxad, okay, Eber, Peleg, and that, and that line, okay, there was a falling away at the time of Terah, who was Abraham's father, but that legacy was restored through the spirit of the Most High, through his mediator, Melchizedek, Abraham was returned to his true legacy after being raised in idol worship, a Gentile, okay, and then what? He had Isaac, who had Jacob, who had 12 sons, so the Bible is giving you the history of the 12 sons of Jacob. Now, there are various other histories that go into what happened at the time of Antiochus, and, and, and from the perspective of the particular heathen, other heathen he conquered. The Bible gives you the perspective from the chosen seed. Okay? So it says, the house of Jacob was covered with confusion. Could you imagine that? This dude just coming to the, the temple meant everything to us. Okay? Now we are the temple. Okay? And, and Esau is going to try to seize and, and do his thing to the temple in these times. But he ain't going to get his hand on us. He may get a few of us, but ultimately the Lord is going to lift up a standard. Okay, because the temple is the dwelling place of the Most High. This is how we have commune with the Most High through the mercy seat, which is Yahweh Shai. Okay, and we are the, the, the priesthood in these times. Okay, all 12 tribes now have access to get a message from the Most High and go tell the people. Okay. It says, and after two years fully expired, okay, the king sent his chief collector of tribute, okay, because they made Israel, all right, Jerusalem, a vassal, okay, took him down and made him a vassal, okay, just like at the time of the Roman Empire, Judea was a vassal to the Roman Empire, it says, so you got to pay tribute. So after two years fully expired, the king sent his chief collector of tribute unto the cities of Judah who came unto Jerusalem with a great multitude. And he spake peaceable words unto them, but all was deceit. Like Joe Biden was speaking those peaceable words to you Israelites. Okay, you, you, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. What was he saying? We're going to do this, do this, that, that, all of these promises. Okay, he was speaking smoothly. You niggas were hopping up and down. He loves us. We got to send a savior. You know, all of this stuff. And look how that worked out for you. Okay. So he spoke those peaceable words. Okay. Like Apostle Tahar said, you know, uh, Biden could be Antiochus or one of the Antiochians coming back. Because right now we're in the time of Hellenization, which is what this whole story is all about. Okay where they're trying to stamp their customs on us and force us to follow their gods and throw away our God and his only begotten son. Okay? So he spake peaceable words unto them, but all was deceit. For when they had given him credence, he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people in Israel. So right after he talked all of those peaceable words, he put to death a lot of people, Antiochus and his uh, cohorts, okay? Well, actually, he sent his chief collector to do that, all right? And when he had taken the spoils of the city, he set it on fire and pulled down the houses and the walls thereof on every side. <laughs> now, you would have to ask, why what's wrong with this dude why is it why are they so hateful and, and you know destructive and abusive towards israelites it all goes back to an age-old war that started in a womb okay of rebecca okay where two seeds issued forth from isaac okay because the man carries the seed okay um they were fighting in a womb. Okay? It says, And he burnt the walls of the, on every side, but the women and children took their captive and possessed the cattle. Okay? They took the women. 
okay, which is an ancient custom. You take down a nation, you take their women, okay? And you make their women bow to you, you and your gods, all right? And that has happened to our women in these times and our men, but they, they mainly first go after the women, okay? It says, so they had taken the women and children captive and possessed the cattle. Then builded they the city of David with a great and strong wall and with mighty towers and made a stronghold for them. And they put therein a sinful nation, wicked men, and fortified themselves therein. They stored it also with armor and victuals. So they basically just took over the city. Okay? Imagine somebody coming to your kitchen. All right? Take your pictures of your family off the refrigerator, the little sticky, the little fruity stickies and fruits. You throw that shit off. You kick open the door. Okay? Throw throw your your your, your uh you you didn't ju you got juice I'm, I'm I'm juicing this week so you got all your juice in the refrigerator come and throw the juice out pour it down the sink okay put cool pitchers of Kool Aid in there beer okay cool as light okay throw your forks and steal everything and set up shop take your woman and your child captive. And say, this is ours now. We're here. That's what the Edomites did. Okay? And they've done that plenty of times. Okay? Did it to Gad as well, man. But anyway. They st stored it also with armor and victuals. And when they had gathered together the spoils of Jerusalem, they laid them up there. And so they became... A, a sore snare for it was for it was a place to lie in wait against the sanctuary and an evil adversary to Israel okay thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it insomuch that the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them whereupon the city was made an habitation of strangers and became strange to those that were born in her, and her own children left her. Okay, so the people who were born there, who knows the history of Israel and grew up in the customs, they're looking at the city like, what is this? All right, pigs and shit everywhere, just weird, you know, weird by. They were like, oh my goodness. Okay, and it says, her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness, her feasts were turned into mourning, her Sabbaths into reproach, and her honor into contempt. As had been her glory, so was her dishonor increased, and her excellency was turned into mourning. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his kingdom that all should be one people. All right? It's the same thing that they're ultimately saying in this time. Everybody has to come under this order. Okay, so the new world order we hear about is actually an old world order that goes back to Nimrod, but it's try it's been tried many times. All right, because the Lord divided the nations. All right, here it is. Catholicism means you know universal Christianity. They talk about all nations coming as one. The Lord has never desired for all nations to be one. Okay. The Lord divided the nations. Okay, and he gave the children of Israel, all right, his inheritance. That's his inheritance. He gave them his laws, and we were to teach the people how to live. Okay, but we fell away. We fell away at the time of Adam. Okay, the sons of God in Genesis, the sixth chapter. Okay, we fell away well, when the laws were given unto us at the time of Moses. There's plenty of falling aways in the scriptures, man. This being the greatest from 70 AD to around 1970, when we didn't have any understanding. But thanks be to Yahweh Bashmi Shah for giving us the Holy Spirit so that we can do exactly what we're doing now, okay? So, going back here, okay? So, moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. 
me get this precept I read, wrote down just to see exactly what it says. I don't know why, but 2 Maccabees 6 and 1. Not after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and to live after the and not to live after the laws of God and to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem and call it the temple of Jupiter Olympus. All right, and that in Garza, all right, of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in the place. All right, and that's later on in the history. It says, Moreover, King Antiochus, 1 Maccabees 1 and 41, Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. Okay? The heathen that he conquered and the Israelites. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandments of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. Now let me get 1 Corinthians Okay, chapter uh, 12, and I'm going to read the second verse. Because these, you know, these people eventually had children on down the line who were raised in these customs. These Israelites who consented, <laughs> all right? This is uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as ye were led. Carried away unto these dumb idols. So read this again. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. They became uncircumcised, man. So you have to know this story in order to understand the New Testament. There's no way you can understand the New Testament without understanding this story of the Israelites and what happened in the Greek captivity. You can't just jump from Malachi to the book of uh, uh, Matthew, okay, and think you're going to have an understanding of the Holy Scriptures. No. Okay, and Christians don't even do that. They just start in Matthew and think you can just ignore the whole history of the Scriptures. And this is why y'all dried out and stagnant, okay? So... Yea, many also of the Israelites had consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. Okay? And this same sentiment is being put on the earth in these times. All right? That we're going to have to fall and bow to the idols of the heathen in the form of Yab, this Yab. <laughs> All right? And eventually the Haragma. They're forcing you to bow to the image of the beast. But the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land, right? Right now you're being told that you need to follow the strange laws of the land, right? And forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days. Now, in these times, we don't have a physical temple, but what is Romans, the 12th chapter, or the uh, second, or Romans 2, 12, I believe, what does it say? We make our bodies a living sacrifice, because ultimately, we are fulfillment of the temple in these times, okay? But they don't want us to make our bodies a living sacrifice for Yahweh Bashmi Shai. okay? They are going to tell us we need to make our bodies a living sacrifice for their building and their tower of Babel which is going to lead to death, okay? Which is not, uh, which is forbidden in the Holy Scriptures to do what they're asking us to do, okay? But just like right now, we see many of our people, all right, without even uh, thinking about it, without questioning, are just bowing to these agendas, man. Wondering after the beast, worshiping the beast, okay? So, they're forbidding burnt offers. Now, the sacrifice of animals was done away with, right? But the sacrifice itself is still required. Okay, now, Yahweh Shai was the final sacrifice that brought us back. You know, his blood, you know, gave, you know, we have grace and ultimately we're justified. But there's still a sacrifice that has to be offered by the men of the Lord. And you do that 
with the sacrifice of your lips, teaching his word, okay, and turning from idols and repenting. Okay, it's an invest it's a it's a it's a sacrifice. The body of believers, starting at the men of the Lord, okay, are the temple. Okay? The the the, the dwelling place of the most high on the earth now is fulfilled in us who are offering up our bodies as a living sacrifice. And while it's being built, the, the, the heathen are building their uh, 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 fourth industrial revolution and saying, no, you're going to make your body a sacrifice for us or you can't live. And this is the point where we're coming into on the earth, man. This is why we're telling you Israelites to get serious about what's happening around you. Stop playing so goddamn much. So the king sent letters and messengers unto Jerusalem and to the cities of Judah. Okay, so they went from house to house, knocking on the door, just like they're going to start doing with this job right now that this new uh, 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 Omicron is here. Right? Things are going to start to get intensified in the spirit over these next months. All right? But fear not. Okay? It says, we'll jump to verse uh, 46, and to pollute the sanctuary and the holy people. And this is the sanctuary. Our body is the temple. So they want us to pollute it. How in these times? Well, back then, they wanted you to bow to their idols, their gods, eat swine, and we're going to see it. And set up altars and groves and chapels of idols. Today, that's these churches. <laughs> And sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beast. And the pig is the, 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 that is the number one delicacy of the Edomites. They love it. And you could be driving up the street, you look up a billboard, a big ass hamburger, okay, bacon. Okay, bacon, bacon, bacon. Every goddamn one, like on that movie, tripping. Bacon, bacon, bacon. All right, bacon's everywhere because the Edomites are ruling. Okay, that's one of that. That's their number one meat, and they know that the Israelites are still around. And when they got us into hardcore captivity, that's the number. That's the one of the first things they changed is our diet. They knew that there's a particular way the Lord requires us to eat, so they started giving us things like chitlins. Now Jake is making egg rolls out of the chitlins. Now it's a delicacy. Now it's a part of Black culture and the rest of. The tribes as well eat, I mean, Ephraim, I mean, pork is basically, the scriptures tells you how Ephraim would eat unclean things in, in Egypt, okay, and we're back in Egypt, okay, and the new Pharaoh are you Edomites, okay, it says an unclean beast, okay, so he wanted you to do that, he wanted you to sacrifice and eat swine's flesh and unclean beast, okay, it says <clears throat> that they should leave the laws. It said that they should also leave their children uncircumcised. And that's what they want. They want you to, you know, they don't want you to, what scripture say, he that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. And that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanliness and profanation. And they want to do our children like that in these times. They want us, okay, to allow our children to be sucked into this alphabet agenda and this freak weirdo agenda, okay? To the end that they might forget the law and change all the ordinance, ordinances, okay? And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. Okay, so imagine what our forefathers had to, and foremothers had to endure in these times, man. Okay, because as we keep reading, it's going to get into, there was a remnant, okay, starting with Mattathias, the, the father of Judas Maccabeus, who ultimately said, hell no, nah, we're not bowing. Okay, and this has happened many times in history. Okay, and now we're in that same time where... Hellenization is pretty much back, okay? This technological Greco-Roman beast system 
is back saying you're going to bow to our idols and our gods or, or, or you're going to die. And it's all centered around propaganda and they're using this C-19 to ultimately uh, 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 trick everybody or scare everybody into what? Doing their bidding, okay? So it says, it says, um, and whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. In a selfsame manner, he wrote, wrote he unto his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over the people commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. So he was going city by city, making, all right, particular of Judah to sacrifice city by city. Okay, and here you had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay, may have had particular scattered, you know, uh, remnants of the uh, northern kingdom, but they were already on the other side of the world. Okay, it says, in the selfsame manner over here in the Americas, wrote he unto his whole the kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice unclean beasts and swine flesh city by city. Then many of the, because Esau has a hard on for to see Jake sin to the point where he'll pay millions of dollars to particular Jakes just to make them, to, to freak them out, okay, and to, you know, basically pollute the culture. And they do it with a lot of these musicians, okay, and athletes, entertainers, and make them your leaders. But they're fagged out, they're weirdos, tattoos all over their head, their face. And they're all bought and paid for by the occult, the left hand, okay? The true leaders of you Israelites are the prophets, the apostles, okay? The bishops. The Lord said what? He set up the, 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 these particular men for the edifying of the church. Okay? Steve Harvey and all of these niggas who they're telling you. Well, Steve Harvey just said he's starting a new religion. Now, what he just... Hardcore Christian a minute ago. Okay. They're all being paid off to do these things to lead you niggas astray. And who's going to be the number one follower? The women. Okay. Think like he told you women. Think like a, a, a man. Anyway. Then many of the people were gathered unto them to wit every one that forsook the law, and so they committed evils in the land, okay? And drove the Israelites into secret places, even wheresoever they could flee for succor, comfort. Now the 15th day of the month of Kassalu, in the 140th uh, uh, year, they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar, okay, and builded idol altars throughout the cities of Judah on every side. Okay, now this was the abomination that make it desolate at this time, then you had the abomination that make it desolate at the time of, uh, you know, in 70 AD, okay, starting around 64 AD. Okay, and now in these times we have the abomination that make it desolate, that, that haragma, okay, and the idols of the heathen of this time, okay, where they want to they wanna cut off the sacrifice, okay, because that's where the Lord shows us favor through sacrifice, okay, if you didn't know. So it says, okay. Uh, they now on the, it says they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar and builded idol altars throughout the cities of Judah on every side and burnt incense at the doors of their houses and in the streets because many cultures use incense it says and when they had rent in pieces the books of the law which they found they burned them with fire, Bible burning, okay, which just happened a few times in history, okay, where having the Bible was illegal, 
Now, I was just reading, I believe, I forget where it was at. There's a particular, if not Italy, it's not Norway. It's somewhere where there's a particular trial where they're, they're trying to deem Bible, the Bible hate speech. And eventually, as more draconian measures come, preaching the Bible will be illegal because the Bible is 129%, 144%, or I'll just say 100%, okay, against this new world order and what they're doing, okay? It says, so they were burning the Bibles, man. Okay, and they which, uh, and when they had rent in pieces the books of the law, which they found, they burnt them with fire. Now, of course, the whole Bible, the Bible wasn't, you know, as we have it today, wasn't written back then. But the scrolls, okay, the scrolls were ultimately uh, burnt with fire, man, in written pieces. It says, and whosoever was found with any book of the Testament or if any consented to the law, the king's commandment was that they should put him to death. Could you imagine living in these times? Could you imagine living in these times? Well, we're coming into these times. <laughs> All right. It says that was the commandment that if you kept the laws or if you had the scrolls, the Bible, you would be put to death. This is what Esau did. Okay. Thus they did by their authority unto the Israelites by every month. They did that by month. They will go and make you sacrifice, and if they found the laws, if they found you playing any Israelite games, wearing any Israelite clothing, you will be put to death, man. And as many as were found in the cities. Now, the five and twentieth day of the month, they did sacrifice upon the idol altar, which was upon the altar of God. Wow. At the time, which according, let's see here, at which time, according to the commandment, they put to death certain women that had caused their children to be circumcised. So if the women were circumcising their children, okay, they would put that woman to death and the child because they're heathen. Okay, and they change and they hang the infants about their necks. Okay, hanging infants about their necks. And Esau hung us from trees in this time. Hung, they hung and hang infants from their necks, man. Did not uh, uh this guy, what's his name? Haman. He wanted to have us hung, and his ass ended up getting hung. Okay, And they hanged the infants about their necks and rifled their houses and slew them that had circumcised them. Howbeit many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed them themselves not to eat any unclean thing. So see, there was a remnant of Jake amongst all of those who were going off and, and, and bowing that said, nah, man, we ain't doing that, right? Wherefore, they chose to rather to die that they might not be defiled with meats and that they might not profane the holy covenant. So then they died. You had particular of our foreparents who would die rather than eat swine. And there was very great wrath upon Israel. All right. Now that concludes the first chapter of uh, Maccabees, first Maccabees. Okay. Now, we're going to stop there, but when you read the very first chapter, the very next chapter, uh, chapter 2, it says, In those days arose Mattathias, the son of John, the son of Simon, the priest of the sons of Jorib, from Jerusalem, and dwelt in Modin. And he had five sons, all right? Jonan, called Caddis, Simon, called Thastus, Judas, who was called Maccabeus, the hammer, Eleazar called Averon and Jonathan, whose surname was Apus. Now, notice it's mentioned in the fathers. 
But anyway, this is leading into the story of Hanukkah as we continue reading and what was happening, all right? And this group, who ultimately other men would be gathered into them, who ultimately would, uh, you know, refrain from bowing to the idols of the heathen and ultimately lean upon, all right, Yahweh Bashim Shai, and ultimately great things happen for them, all right? So with that, we're going to conclude 1 Maccabees, the first chapter, and Lord willing, we will get into the second chapter tomorrow, okay, and I'll try to finish it off. Uh, maybe before the week is done, all right, even if it's after this week, we're going to get through the whole thing so that you brothers and sisters who don't have an understanding of the Feast of Dedication, because what happened? They destroyed, they would, they just rifled the temple, okay? So the, the beauty of it is at the end, we rededicated the temple, man. So we'll get into the rest of it, get into some more history, and hopefully you all were edified. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakwadash, and double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutations unto the elect. Shalom.